Good morning, friends. It's Steve, and uh, we're back home in southern Illinois. Back to the land of cold mud. But hey, it's our own cold mud, so I'm happy. All of us like to look good, be right, and feel significant. But what if the standard by which you are measuring your goodness or proving yourself right or deriving significance from is challenged? What then? I was only 17 when Vivian and I met. We were both sophomores at Union College in Lincoln, Nebraska, and I was smitten at first sight, okay? I proposed marriage two weeks later, and her reply was unusual. She didn't turn me down. I'd never proposed marriage before, so I wasn't experienced at this, but her reply was, don't ask me that. You're too young. You see, her father had died when she was eight years old leaving her mother with five children. Her mother set the goal of getting all five of them through college and critical to achieving that goal was maximizing their use of Social Security survivor benefits. For those of you outside the United States, when uh, someone, a husband dies in the United States, the wife and children get uh, some benefits from the government to help them survive. But those Social Security survivor benefits at that time only provided uh, tuition support for the children until they finished college or turned 22 or got married. And so those standards became the de facto rules in the family. Finish college and don't get married before you're 22. This was how they went about looking good, being right, and feeling significance. Good children did well in school good children successfully finished college before their Social Security benefits ran out. Good children did not get married until after they were 22. Bad children? Well, they didn't measure up to those standards. But I was smitten, okay? And a smitten man is not deterred by rules. Finally, on my 50th proposal, Vivian said yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, but there was a catch. I was still too young, so we couldn't tell anybody about this. We carried on this secret engagement for a few months until the Vivian proposed that we go as student missionaries to Indonesia together. This would require us to get married early, but hey, going and getting married early so you can be a missionary, surely that would define as good, wouldn't it? Well, how did I respond? <laughs> yes, 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 I was ecstatic, okay? <laughs> you know? Um, uh, Vivid always dreamed of a Christmas wedding, and so we planned the wedding for December of the following year, and we would leave for Indonesia one week later. Now, in January of that year, Vivian had to go back to Michigan, where she, her home was, to take a couple of classes that weren't available at the college in, in Nebraska for her degree. Lincoln. 
so our spring breaks didn't overlap so I planned on hitching a ride to Michigan for my spring break and then she would hitch a ride down for her spring spring break um, but I had been thinking you see I expected adjusting to married life to be somewhat of a challenge for us I was at least that mature and my childhood experiences with moving had helped me to understand that every time you move to a new community and especially if you move to a new country and a new culture that's challenging the two challenges on top of each other well that could be overwhelming and on top of that we were both starting into our first teaching roles we were training to be teachers but this would be the first time we, we would actually be teaching which was another stressor added on top and three step tr stressors on top of each other like that could turn challenge into overwhelming into disaster personally but also as a couple and I was worried that our marriage, whether our marriage would be able to withstand all of this. Well, when I discussed this with Vivian, she burst into tears. I was asking her to break the family rules. How can I tell your children that you were married? We got married when you were a teenager. But I'll lose a whole semester of tuition support if we do that. Now, just to put this in context, that semester of tuition support was more than e the two of us together could earn at our summer jobs. How can I prepare for a wedding in only three months and still keep up my GPA? None of these questions were facetious to either of us. It was a tough choice. The standards by which Vivian had been taught to measure goodness, to determine right and wrong, to derive meaning and purpose from her life, they were all being called into question. I was essentially asking her to give up looking good, being right, and feeling significant in order to marry me. The upshot. The upshot was, uh, after long discussions and bringing her mom in to weigh pros and cons and to get her blessing, well, the upshot was two weeks later when Vivian came to visit me, we were picking out wedding announcements with a date in June. We were renting tuxes for June. She found fabric. Can you believe this, girls? She found fabric and gave it to her bridesmaids so they could make their own dresses. Oh, they were real women, weren't they? And they were beautiful real women. So, there were still hard decisions for us to make, but we had found a new set of standards, guidelines, to lead us through the choices that we had to make. Have you ever been in a situation like this? Asked to discard one set of standards to risk not looking good in order to achieve something, to get a job, to enter into a relationship. All of us like to look good be right and feel significant. But is our goodness, is our rightness, is our significance real? Perhaps. But something we don't often acknowledge is that it's highly dependent on our context. Vivian's family values were real. I respected them and they were valuable. We haven't changed much from what her, her mom had taught her. But in a new context, facing new challenges, 
she was asked to abandon them, modify them, and adopt new standards to guide her decisions. And for me, this is the essence of what we face as Laodiceans. In my mind, we all face the judgment seat of God. And in that context, our standard of goodness, our determinations of right and wrong, how we have measured the significance of our lives will be measured against God's standards. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. That they may all be one, even as I and the Father are one. If you love me, keep my commandments. Be safe, my friends. Spring is coming. Be warm. <laughs> but remain prudent, and above all, keep looking up. I hope to see you next week.